Hi, I'm Cheryl from the Saskatoon Public Library, and I'm here with the Crafternoon program today. I'd like to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 6 land and the homeland of the Métis. We are all treaty people, and I welcome everyone to this program. Today we're going to look at one of my favorite hobbies, which is called Counted Cross Stitch. I learned Counted Cross Stitch at a, in about high school age. And with counted cross stitch, you can make a variety of different types of pictures. I made the, my mom made this one many years ago. I tend to work on ones that are a little bit larger. This is my current project. But I'm going to start you on something a little bit easier. A small little heart just to get you started. Okay. What we need to start with is a pattern. Um, I'm going to switch to an overhead view in just a minute. This is just to give you a little bit of an idea of what we'll need. So we've got our pattern. We need a special type of fabric called Ada cloth. It's made for counted cross stitch. I'll explain a little bit more about it in a minute. We need embroidery cotton or embroidery floss. It comes in a skein like this and it looks like it's very thick, but we'll be dividing that into individual strands. It helps to have a way to keep your fabric tight so you can make either a cardboard cutout or put it into a hoop which most people use. This comes apart and you put your fabric in between and that holds it tight. You'll need a needle that has a large eye. It's about not quite a centimeter long we'll be putting about three strands of thread into the needle so it helps to have a large eye. Scissors, I have some small ones here but you can use bigger ones. And then masking tape and a little bit of white glue if you have it. I'm going to pause it here and then switch to an overhead view so you can see things close up. Okay, we'll get started with our cross stitch heart. We've got our pattern. It says it's an 11 stitches across by nine stitches up and down. On this chart, each of these squares will represent a square on your fabric and a stitch that you will, you will make. There is a legend at the bottom that shows us that the dark colored squares with the asterisks in them are red and the light colored squares with the plus sign are pink. If you're doing a larger project, there would be many more colors listed and they usually have both a symbol and a color so you can uh, photocopy it in black and white if you need to or in color if you can. Okay, on this it also shows us where the middle point is. We always start a, a pattern from the middle point. So you find the two arrows and where they intersect is the middle. So this square here is going to be our middle square. And when we count for our first stitch, we'll count from here back to the start of that first color. And that takes us to this point here. So we just count one, two, three stitches and start at this point A. Okay, next we need to get our fabric. This is counted cross stitch fabric called eight o'clock. It comes in different counts. So in this one, we'll see that it's 11 count. If you take a ruler and count the number of stitches in one inch, that will show you that there is 11 in this, in this um, type of fabric. 14 count would be 14 stitches in an inch, and it is a much smaller square. So if you look here and count the number of stitches in an inch, you'll see these are much smaller than this one is. Uh, counted cross stitches usually worked in 14 count, but I'm using 11 count today because it's a little bit bigger so you can see what you're doing. Here I've put it into a wooden uh, uh, cardboard frame. I've just used masking tape to do that. Although the stitches are going to be about this big, 
Um, we want to add a little bit of extra fabric to the top and the bottom in case you're going to do framing or um, in case you've miscounted and are off to one side a little bit. You can also put it in a little hoop, which is what I've done here. You can see that it frays quite a bit on the edges. So what you can do is use masking tape and just tape all the edges and that'll keep the edges nice when you're working on it. The tape can come off afterwards. And before you put it into your hoop, it's a good idea to um, figure out where your middle point is. So I've made this uh, square here just a tiny bit bigger. So I know that that is my middle point and that'll match the middle point on our pattern. Okay, so now we need our embroidery cotton or embroidery floss. It comes in a skein like this. I always put mine onto little cards because they store easier and I can find them by number. We're going to start out with our color pink. And we're going to cut off about 18 inches, 42 centimeters, something along those lines. Of course, my ruler slipped off to the side. There it is. Okay, so we'll do, there's 12 inches or 30 centimeters and another six, another 10 centimeters. That takes us to about here. So we'll just cut off here. Doesn't need to be exact. Now remember this floss looks like it's very thick, but that's because there's actually three, six strands of thread in each skein of floss. So you can see that there are six, six threads. Now for 11 count, it's best to use three, strand, three strands. Um, for 14 count, you can use two strands. So we need to take out three strands from here. And I, I can guarantee you that if you try and take three strands right here, you're gonna end up with a knot at the end. So easiest thing, my trick, grab one strand. Oh, there's one that's separated itself out. Grab down here a bit and pull. You'll find that it gathers a little bit. Draw that gathering all the way to the end of your thread. Do it again. Pull a little bit. Take that gathering all the way down to the end. After you've done it two or three times, you can probably pull that thread right out. And then just run your fingers down to the end. That's one. You do another one. Do the same thing. Pull a little bit out. Move that gathering all the way to the end. Pull another one out. Move that gathering all the way to the end. Pull the whole thing out and make sure to always straighten that remaining bit of, of thread. Got two, need one more. Okay, there's our one strand there. Whoops, grab it. There we go. Pull it down, move that gathering all the way down. Pull it out, move that gathering all the way down, pull it all the way out. Now, you'll probably need this strand of thread to continue on, but we're just going to set it off to the side for now. And we're going to pick up our three strands of thread. Here we go. Try and get them as even as possible. And one more. There's the end. Oops, missed. Yep. And near the other through two. And now pull up, oh, missed it again. Okay, there they are. And now I've got all three of them attached. No, I don't. Now I've got this one is doubled for some reason. So I'm just going to 
let part of it go because I gathered it up at the top. There we go. Okay, now we have all three strands together to work as one. Okay, now we need to thread our needle. A um, couple ways of doing this. Wetting the ends makes it easier to put it in. Another trick I found is to fold it in half over your needle. Grip it very tight. Pull it off. And then that stiffens that end and it allows you to slide all three into your eye. And then pull it down a bit. And our needle's ready to go. Okay. Here's a stitching chart. We're going to bring the needle up at point A and down at point B. We're going to take our thread underneath and come up at C, so directly below B, and down at D. Take it underneath, come back up at E, and down at F. That puts all of our first half crosses from the bottom left to the top right. Bottom left, top right. We want those stitches always, the bottom stitch always to be going in this direction. If you change that, those stitches will really show up in your piece and make it look un undone. It looks nicer if they're all the same. Coming back, we finished here. We're going to come up at G and go down at H. Come up at I, go down at J. Come up at L, nope, K, and go down at L. I'll explain what M and N is in a little bit. What you'll notice on the back of your fabric is that they're all up and down. So here on my mine, you can see the lines are mostly up and down. And these are where we weave it in. I'll explain that in a couple minutes. Okay, so we have our chart. We said come up at A, go down at B. Because this was our center. Take our fabric. I found my middle point, which was here. I need to count one, two, three stitches over. One, two, three stitches over. Bottom left hand corner. Draw up your thread. Now, leave about a three inch tail. You can hold on to it as you're stitching, or you can put a little bit of masking tape there. We'll be weaving that in once we get to the end of this color. And now we stitch seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bottom left to the top right. Bottom left to the top right. Come up underneath that stitch that you just put your needle down at and come back up again. Bottom left, top right. lost it. Four stitches. Five stitches. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And last one is seven. There's the base for our first cross. Now we need to come back and cross it the other way to make the X. So right below the one, last one that you came up. And then now we're going from the bottom right to the top left to form our X. Bottom right to top left.
And this is our last stitch of that row. And now we have seven cross stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that matches this part of the pattern. So our next set, we're going to go, this is our the, the very first one we did. We're going to count over one stitch to get to the starting point of this next row. So here was our finishing stitch. Now we'll count over one and we'll work this row, bottom left, top right, all the way across. Now we're going to speed this up since it does take a little bit of time. Oh, we know that we go one past on this one and we're going to finish with one past this row here. And then underneath this bottom stitch and cross it back the other way. Now you'll sometimes get knots in your thread. It is a good idea to check the back every now and then. You can see we've got our straight lines. No knots happen back there. If you do discover a knot, it's, it's a good idea to just take it out back to that knot, undo the knot, and then put your stitches back in again. Knots can come through the fabric and make a lump. So we try not to have knots in our fabric. Okay, we're at the end of this row. And we've done this row. So now our next row, we notice that it starts directly above. It does four stitches and then there's a different color. We can skip that stitch and then go over and do these four and then come back. Now, Working directly above, I'm going to show you on this chart again, you'll discover that you just went down L here, but to do your next stitch going this direction, you'd have to come back up in exactly the same stitch. If you do that, I'll show you what happens. I'm coming up in the stitch I just went down. We've undone the stitch. So you need to leave that back in. And instead, what you were going to do is we're going to come up at N and go down at M. That makes your same cross in the same direction, but it just starts at the other end of that cross stitch. So you come up here and go down there. So I'm going to go up here and come back down to my bottom left. My cross is still in the same direction. And then you can go back to your normal bottom left to top right. Oops, I got my thread, earlier thread there. Okay. And now we have four stitches to do. One, two, three. And four. Now we're going to skip one stitch and do one, two, three. 
three and four. So we've skipped that middle stitch. And when we come back, we will skip that stitch again. It's okay to skip one, two, three skip stitches. If you're going to be skipping quite a few, it's best to tie off your end and restart where you're going to have that color again. But for a few stitches, it doesn't matter. I'm getting to the end of my thread here. Oops, I've lost it. Have to re-thread it. It still looks like it's got enough to finish up this row, but you can stop in the middle of the row. It doesn't really matter. There we go. I just kind of like to finish a row if I can with that one strand. Okay, here's our last stitch of that row. And it's getting close to needing to be tied off. Okay, so I said we don't use knots, we weave it in. So what that means is I'm going to take this thread underneath one, two, <clears throat> three stitches, and then over the top of this last one and under the follow the back two. So over one, back under two. And now that stitch will not go anywhere. It's tied off. And you can snip it close. Now we're going to do the same thing with that tail we had left. We didn't have any stitches to weave it under when we started. But we do now. So we thread it through, go under three stitches. Back over the last one and under the back two and we'll tie that off or we cut that off there we go and there is our first three rows of stitches we've got two more little sets up here I'm going to get my thread again and we need to take out the strands and make them separate. So here's one, gather it, pull it down. And even when you've only got two strands, it still works best to grab one, make it gather a bit, pull it all the way down, and then pull it all the way through. And there we have two strands three strands thread that back into our needle now when we're starting this time we actually have stitches so that we can tie it in. I don't usually like going through the same stitches that were already used. So I'm just going to use one of these middle ones now. Under three. Over one. Back under two. And we're ready to stitch again. Again. This time we're going up one again. But since we've tied that other one off, we can go in that stitch, bottom left to top right. We're going to do three stitches. One, two, Now, normally I'd say you can just skip three and go over to the next stitch, 
but there's no other colors that are, well, I guess there will be red there. It's just as easy though to tuck the thread down here so it's kind of out of the way and then come up to your next stitch. And that would be this one here. One. Two. Three. Again, I'm just going to tuck it under that one. And then one, two, Okay, so we finished the top half of the heart in this color, and now we need to come down to this stitch. You can, at this point, um, cut it off, but it's not all that far there, so I kind of cheat a little bit, and I just run my thread down through these stitches till I get close to where my next stitch will be. And it's down here. That'll keep the loose threads from moving. And you don't have to cut off. Okay, so now we've got one, two, three, four, five stitches going across. And then come back the other direction. And now I'm going to go down to this stitch. So I'm just going to drop it all the way down by one stitch. And 
can still do my bottom left to top right. I'm going to do the same with this one. Bottom left to top right. Now we can't come up in this hole, so like when we were over here, we'll go to the top right and then back down into your bottom left. And then with this one, bottom left, top right, bottom left, top right, And then we'll cross it going back the other direction. Bottom right to top left. We'll go down the stitch to get this one. stitch to get this one now that was our stitch that we went down under so we need to go to the top left and come back down into this one go bottom right and then we can go up this one and bottom right to top left and finish this off. Okay, we've done the top section. Now we need to come straight down. Okay, now we need to do a vertical. That's these three stitches. And in order to save thread, which is what we want to do by keeping sort of these lines on the back instead of long crosses, we're going to start at our top right corner and go down to the bottom left. And then over to the side underneath this first stitch and go up, come up here, go down here, come up here, go down there. It just makes our crosses horizontal instead of vertical. So I'm going to start here in the top right and go to the bottom left. This is still the same direction as our base stitches. Come up directly under that stitch that we started. Make our half cross. Top right to bottom left. And then I'm going to continue that down these diagonals. Top right to bottom left. Top right to bottom left. Top right bottom left. You could do these as individual crosses if you want. You just cross one way and then the other way and then move down to your next step. I just like to continue all the way down to this stitch. Here we can go back to our bottom left to top right. Then we'll need to jump it to top right to bottom left. Otherwise, you'd be coming up in that same hole. And just alternate that on our way up this diagonal. So bottom left, top right. Top right to bottom left. Top or bottom 
right to top left, top right to bottom left. Then they're all going the same direction, bottom left to top right, bottom left to top right. And now we need to go back and cross all those stitches. So top left to bottom right, 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 right and then we go back up the other side and then we have to go from the top left to the bottom right and we go back up to bottom right to top left let's go top left to bottom right and then back to bottom right to top left for your last three stitches Notice that all these stitches go in the same direction. So your top stitches are always going this diagonal. And that is our little heart. You to tie off this thread. Cut it off. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of the hoop, whatever frame you were using, this one's actually been in that frame for a little while so it's very stiff in these areas. Now you could make another heart down here if you wanted to. It would get a little bit close to this, but that would, if you're going to fray the edges, that would still be okay. Okay, now I'm going to cut out the heart and then fray the edges. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four stitches up, and I'm gonna go across and start cutting I get kind of close to the heart and then I'll stop and then I'll cut the I'll check it the other direction so I'll just cut this to about there now I want to make sure to only cut so that there's still four rows here so one two four so I've just basically got to cut one more well I think maybe I already got it let's see one two three four and go up, huh? I just stopped, I stopped at exactly the right spot. So now I can go down. And then we'll take it four from here. One, two, three, four, go across. Looks like I have to do one more stitch. One, two, three, four. Oh, one, two, three, four. Went one past it, that's okay. 
I will now go across this way. And I'll go one, two, three, four, and across. So I'm up to up to there. One, two, three, four, go across. Yes, that's the right place. And I need four. One, two, three, four. And up one. Double check that. One, two, three, four, and take that all the way across. So we have one, two, three, four. Okay, one, two, three, four. Yes. Okay, now you can leave it like that and just play the edges and make it a square from a square with this one. Um, I have some diagonals. You'll also notice with this that this was 11 count Ada. This was 14 count Ada. So you can see the size difference that the type of fabric makes. Okay, so I basically left, I think, one, two, I'm just going to take off a little bit there. So I've got starting at the corner of this one, starting at the corner of this one, just going diagonally. I think I started at the corner of this one and took these diagonals. Um, and then starting at the corner of this one, let me find those diagonals. That one's got three, that one's got two, so I counted wrong someplace. I'll just take another row off of that one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, we might need to take off another one. And now to fray them, you just want to pull out the horizontal strands. Just gently, so that you keep the vertical ones in place. And take out as many as you want to make a fringe i left about two you don't want to go right to there or you'll pull out your stitches i left at least two um, rows here i'll leave two rows so that just takes out a little bit i guess i cut off more than i expected and here i'll just take off these ones so it'll be a little bit less fringe and then i took off a little bit at the very bottom don't have to take this part off if you don't want to. Okay, I got some white glue. I'm just going to pour a little bit of it. You just need a tiny little bit. Oops, that's way too much, but I will fix that later. Set that aside. You just need a tiny little bit. And I'm just going to brush the edges. Just just the part that's frayed. Just so that they won't fray anymore. There we go. And then you just let that dry. 
Okay, what you might want to do after that is take some thread. If you make a couple of them, take some thread. You can tie it off like that, or you could um, tie two of these together. Or you can put a few more, hang them up, use them as a bookmark. I've also, I'll also include a heart that's a little bit bigger. So this heart has 17 stitches across, 15 stitches up and down. There's your middle point there. This one was done on the 14 count Ada, so it will be a little bit bigger like this one was, being that it was on the, the 11 count. So you'll have a slightly bigger heart. Thank you for coming to this afternoon session. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll try cross stitch again in the future. You can get cross stitch pattern books at the library and there are also free patterns available on the internet that you can download. Again, thank you for coming. We'll have another afternoon session next month. It'll be the last Sunday of the month. Bye for now.